Hi everyone, I'm Paul, an engineer here at Anai. Welcome to our YouTube series where we, you can learn tips and tricks to help you design, validate, and test products quicker and more effectively. In this series, we'll go through multiple test and measurement topics from using different languages like LabVIEW, Python, and c -sharp to operate test instruments, to automating manual processes, and enabling data analytics. Today I have a very special guest who'll walk us through a nice instrument studio, an application software tool that provides an integrated approach to interactive PXI measurements. Welcome Austin, I'm glad to have you here. Yeah, thanks for having me on. So tell us more before we get into this, uh, what is instrument studio? Yeah, great question. So like you said, uh, instrument studio is kind of a one-stop uh, piece of software for um, our PXI modular instruments, including um, our NI oscilloscopes, mm -hmm. DMMs, waveform generators, um, power supplies, LCR meters, SMUs, um, and also recently gained support for our R RF instrumentation as well, including VSTs and then RF signal generators. So that's that's kind of what it um, what it supports. But what it actually does is it is it is a software equivalent of the physical interface that you'd expect to have on a uh, traditional box instrument. So um, the need for this is based on the, the PXI form factor. Mm -hmm. Obviously, the modules are, are about this uh, thin. So we didn't, didn't have the room to add in the, the buttons and knobs and right. screens and everything else like that. So instead, we built all of that functionality into Instrument Studio. That sounds like a cool modern way of our approach to the tools, instruments, huh? Yeah, I, I completely agree. You might, you might not have the nice tactile feel right. of those physical knobs, but uh, there, there are plenty of other benefits that I believe outweigh any of that. So. Well, I love it. I'm curious to see it in, in action. Let's yeah. see it. Let's jump right in. So here, um, this is what you see right when you open up Instrument Studio. Okay. Uh, so there are several options. The first is debug, which we'll talk about in a minute. Um, and then there's a, a manual layout and an auto create layout, and that's just going to de determine how you actually are able to set up the layout. I'm just going to let it auto create my layout for this one. And then when it does that, it's going to go in and it's going to you know see that I have an SMU and an oscilloscope in there, and it's going to automatically generate a layout for both of those. I love it. I love it. It's very really easy to get going. It seems like you just plug it in and click auto create. I love that feature. Yep, absolutely. And if, if it doesn't create exactly how you want to, let's say you want the SMU to have the larger one and the oscilloscope to have the smaller one, you can always come up here and you can change how it's set up, or you could always just add an extra um, page just to have your SMU completely by itself in the next tab, so oh, you can nice. get more information there. So um, I'm going to go back to this, though. Uh, this screen, kind of what you're seeing, this is what gives, what puts Instrument Studio on parity with, with that physical interface from most box instruments. Mm -hmm. So this is where you can view your channel data. This is where you can go and set up triggering. This is where you can do all that other stuff. So. Sure. Um, the, the nice stuff, like what really put, sets Instrument Studio apart, kind of comes next, and that's going to be organization is the first big thing there. Um, specifically, the documentation aspects, because if I come to this oscilloscope area and I come here, I can really quickly get to the user manual, the specification sheet, and I can always click here and get right to the pinout for my uh, oscilloscope. So without having to leave the program, all of that is just built in. And I can now see the pinouts. I love so. it. This is a this is something I've not seen before either. So I'm learning something too. This is pretty exciting. Yeah, it, it really helps you stay organized overall. Um, same with the the other um, stuff, which is one of them being able to capture a screenshot. So if something was interesting was happening, if I if I get a weird reading, I can always just click there, get a quick screenshot of everything that's on um, the screen. So. You can imagine you can have up to five different instruments on this panel. I could get a screenshot of all of them um, at the same time. If the screenshot isn't quite enough, we also have this data capture um, button. And what that's going to do is rather than just grabbing the, grabbing the screenshot, it's going to grab um, all of the, uh, the channel settings, all of the device configuration settings, and then all of the raw data that you've collected. And it's going to save it into a uh, TDMS file, you can also set that to CSV if that works better for your application. Mm -hmm. um, but I can go ahead and open that up, and I can also just open up this uh, screen capture really quickly so you can see what that looks like oh, while nice. Excel opens. Um, and then, just like I said, you open this up in Excel and you have all your configuration settings, you have your panel configuration, uh, and then you have all the raw data from 
um, both your SMU and your oscilloscope at the same time. Oh, so nice. So it'll pull all that single in. single file. That's exactly. very exciting. Cool. And can these settings be also used by my teammate? Let's say I capture this, can I, can I share these settings? Yeah, great question. So what's really nice is that um, if I save this project here, it will save all of the, it'll save the layout, it will save all of the settings, and it will also save the screenshots and the data in one location that can then take that and share it with you know, one of your colleagues, uh, and then they can easily pull it up and, and replicate the results. So it makes repeatability of measurements extremely easy. Oh, very nice. Yeah, so that, that's the first stuff. Um, organization, I'd say, with this. It, it really helps you stay organized, allowing you to keep all of your um, documentation in one spot, your data, uh, your layouts, all in one project file that can be shared out easily. So that, that sounds pretty good. When I was an engineer, you know, my desk was not the most organized. So <laughs> this is a great way to organizing your instruments and having a single interface. I, I really love this. Yeah, absolutely. So then I'd say the second really nice thing about Instrument Studio is how easy it makes getting to automation. So sure. specifically, you can think about the f how difficult it can be sometimes to go about um, setting up your perfect measurement, setting all the stuff perfectly and making sure that you have it exactly how you want it. Um, well, with Instrument Studio, none of that time is wasted. You're able to take those configuration settings. Uh, if I come up here for the oscilloscope, I can easily export the configurations to a file and then I can just read that file into LabVIEW or Python or whatever um, programming language you want to use. You can just read that in and then you don't need to do any rework within those languages themselves. It'll just automatically set up the measurement how you want it, and then you can move forward with the rest of your tests. So it really streamlines the process of getting to automation. That's pretty cool. And you mentioned Python and Labby. What other languages can you use? Or yep. is that the main languages? So, so those are the ones um, that are supported. So basically, it's all going to depend on the particular instrument. So um, most of our instruments, our modular instruments, support uh, C, C++, .NET, Python, and then obviously LabVIEW. Okay. So you're going to have to look at the particular instrument, but sure. those are the general ones. Gotcha. Yep. And another great feature is specifically for test stand users, um, they can always set up the measurement and configurations just how they want them, and then they can go to export to test stand, which will pull in the layout, pull in all of the conf device and configuration settings directly into a test stand step, so they can just automatically have that working without having to set everything up and test stand themselves. So test end is more of like automation program that you would use. And this is more interactive, correct? Exactly. So you're able to take the, the interactive measurement that you're doing here and then pull it within your um, test and test execution system. So when you're going for that higher level sure. automation. Nice. And, and it's a, as simply as exporting the instrument, right? Exactly. Just coming here, clicking this button when you have everything set up and just pulling it. That's nice. Test yeah, I love that. Absolutely. So. Um, those kind of show off some of the automation features. Uh, the last thing I want to show off is the debug features. So let me go ahead and close out of this. I'm going to discard it for now. I'm going to go back home. And what you can do is you can open a debug session. I'm going to set it up just for my SMU here. And what you would use this for is, let's say that you are running a LabVIEW program, or it could be Python or, or anything else, but let's sure. say LabVIEW for now. Um, and something's not quite right. Something's not working quite right. Uh, so what you can do is you can open up this debug panel for the SMU, and rather than even having to take control of it, without having to, to pull control away from LabVIEW, you can view the data and all the properties and configurations just to make sure everything's set right. Um, and then if something isn't set right, you can always pause execution in LabVIEW, maybe put down a breakpoint, take control in the debug panel, make the changes to the properties, make sure everything's working correctly, and then pass it back to LabVIEW. And so you can imagine how much time you would save rather than having to in LabVIEW, put down, put down an indicator, set that up, make sure everything's working properly, redo everything. Without even having to really stop your LabVIEW program, you can come here, change all those properties, pass it back, and then and determine if that works. So really streamlines the, the debugging process overall. Very cool. Yep, so overall, um, the Instrument Studio not only uh, brings PXI instruments to parity with box instruments by, by providing all of the same features as far as being able to control and, and view your measurements, um, but it also allows you to stay organized. It allows you to uh, streamline the automation process, and it just makes the debugging experience much, much simpler. Oh, very cool. And now, so I know you showed that with SMU here and uh, and the scope here, how many instruments can I have on the single, on, on, running on a single screen here? Yeah, so that's going to be five instruments in, in one screen. 
But if you have more than five instruments, let's say you have an 18 um, slot chassis, you can have multiple different um, panels open. And you could have five, five, five. You could have mix and match combinations. Um, so you could basically, as many instruments as you can have, as you can have in your chassis, sure. you could have an instrument studio and be taking readings from. That's cool. Okay, so I'm myself a data acquisition unit kind of guy. So can I run data acquisition units on, on here? Yeah, so that's a great question. You can't natively run our, our PXI data acquisition cards uh, in Instrument Studio, but with the help of plugins, you are able to, to actually pull in some of our uh, DAC cards and run them using Instrument Studio. That's awesome. So it sounds like there's no limitations to the software, right? It's capable of all, right? It's extremely powerful. And we're, we're making it better every single day. So I'm curious. I mean, it's a lot of features. How much does it cost? Absolutely free. Free? Well, you heard it here. I mean, it's free. So that's, 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 ex that's amazing, right? There's a lot of features that you get. So awesome. Well, thanks for the demonstration. I mean, this is pretty awesome. Thanks, guys, for watching. I um, hope you enjoyed it. Click that like button. Subscribe to see more tips and tricks. And hope to see you next time. Thank you. Thank you.